stop and listen to this before you spend another $200 on your NAD drips and your NMN and NR precursors. I really need you to understand what you're doing. It all comes down to understanding cellular pathways. Unless you look at pathways, you cannot clearly fix the problem that you're trying to by taking more and more NAD. And I would advocate that those of you who love your NAD drips and love your NAD supplements oftentimes may be doing more harm than good. So here's the nasty little secret. Number one, recent studies showed that low NAD levels in mice, when there was not elevation of the degrading enzymes of NAD, were not associated with reduced health. It's not the low NAD levels. It's what's causing the low NAD levels that is the problem. Nobody would argue that NAD is essential to every cell in our body. But what happens is as we age, or if we're inflamed, sick, or if we're overstressed, we get elevation in the degrading enzymes that are draining NAD. So picture that when you're taking these NAD supplements, what you're actually doing is filling a bucket that's leaky. And unfortunately, that leak may be doing bad things. There's two enzymes, one is called CD38 and one is called NNMT. And those two enzymes, which are elevated in most disease states, are draining the NAD. What we are doing by putting NAD back in is not fixing the problem. So to raise the NAD levels, you have to block the hole in the bucket. You have to block these degrading enzymes. I was just on a panel with a lot of longevity experts and all of us, agreed that NAD was not the answer. I was speaking to Eric Burden from Buck Institute. His company is working on developing products that will help with this problem. We can't just keep throwing things into the mix when we don't know what we're doing. What should you do? If I need to fix the leaky bucket, I need to block these enzymes. The best way to block NNMT, which is basically methylating nicotinamide and turn it into a compound called 4 that's damaging. To block NNMT the same way the body does, I can use something called 1-methyl nicotinamide or 1-MNA. And 1-MNA will block that enzyme that's degrading the nicotinamide. And because that enzyme, NNMT, is elevated in most disease states, blocking it should help not only raise my NAD levels, but keep the NAD from those cells that really want it, like cancer cells and senescent cells. You also have to block CD38. And right now, we may not have a great answer for that one. We've been using apigenin, which may have some benefits but we probably still need to be looking at other compounds that will have some benefit for blocking the CD38 enzyme. We know that CD38 is really elevated in the disease states as well. In fact, there was a very interesting study in mice where NAD levels dropped dramatically when the mice were stressed and their CD38 levels went up. That's what caused the drain was the stress states. One of my friends who is a physician in London said this perfectly. Yes, cells love NAD, but bad cells love NAD even more. So our body really is going to take this NAD and give it to senescent cells, give it to cancer cells. So what are you doing when you're taking these supplements? If you love your NAD supplements, you need to also block the hole in the bucket. So use them periodically, not continuously. Block the enzymes and they're degrading them. I think this is such an important point. I'm a little fearful about where we're going with this fad of just putting NAD over and over and over again in the people. You might be, in the long run, making things worse. And you have to give careful consideration to these mechanisms. They're not well understood by a lot of doctors who are just looking at NAD as the issue and not the downstream mechanics. I know this might not make all of you happy, but I think you need to at least look into this more seriously. The data is becoming more and more compelling against what we're doing here. So think about working to block the reason the NAD levels are dropping, not just putting back NAD. 